Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. Obviously, you can see my face. All right, we are going to be recording a guide live on stream. If you guys on YouTube didn't know that I stream, I stream Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. EST. Uh, so jump in sometime if you guys have questions or just want to watch some live gameplay. Uh, but we're trying something different today. Um, I can't get enough guides out that I want to. So we're going to be recording some live and just see how it goes. So today we're going to be talking about um, reading your map in squad um, and some stuff to make it easier and just some stuff um, for those of you that are new at the game and maybe don't really understand what's going on on the map. Um, so very first thing is I want you guys to change your key bind. Okay. Stop reaching for your M key. Okay. Your M key is too far away. You want to keep your hands close to the WASDs. Okay. So you're going to open up your settings. I want you guys to go to your controls. Go to your infantry. Actually, wait, is it general? It is general. Okay, so your toggle map key. You guys can make this whatever you want. You can make it your thumb buttons on your on your mouse. Um, you can make it any number of keys. I preferably use uh, V. It's it's easy for me to, to quickly hit this, okay? Just taking my finger off the D key, still keeping you know the, the middle finger on the W key, whatever it may be. Um, and then also keeping your command menu uh, on the caps lock key. Um, your command menu allows you to pan around uh, your V. This one only allows you to zoom in and out based on your position. So if you're trying to look at somewhere across the map, uh, you need to open up the command map. Um, so once you have that, okay, there's some tools that you can make or that you can enable to make this a lot easier to view. Um, up here in the top right, you have a cogwheel. Okay, in this cogwheel, uh, you have some options to disable and enable. Um, the first one that I always recommend is the toggle viewing fob radii. Basically what this will do is when I turn it off, okay, you lose a lot of information on the map. Okay, you no longer have that inner blue circle or that outer white circle. So when I turn this on, basically inner blue circle is the buildable area. So where you can put your hab, where you can put your ammo crate, where you can put your emplacements, all that different stuff. Uh, I'm getting shot at in game right now, so I'm gonna hit the deck. Um, so I always recommend having that on. Um, that's typically one that is not really like, it's like a if it's better or not. Uh, it is better having it on. Um, the other big one that I'm going to talk about is the toggle viewing roles as player icons. So if you guys can see on my map, I'll try to zoom it in uh, in post if I can. But basically right now, you can see these guys are both riflemen. Um, you can turn this on and off uh, to turn them into arrows. So on one side of things, um, for new players, I typically recommend having them as arrows. Um, so in the situation that I am moving along with these guys, or maybe I'm a little bit away, um, if I see them looking at things and firing, I kind of know where they're firing at. Um, I know where the enemies are. If this guy starts shooting, I hear him shooting. I know he's probably shooting at someone here, someone here. It just gives me a lot more information in that regard. Um, as you understand further uh, enemy weapon noises, where they're coming from, whatever they may be, uh, I do recommend the player roles. Again, personal preference. Um, so the player roles allows you to see just that, the player roles. So I can see who the riflemen are, who my AT is, uh, who my sappers are, uh, all of that stuff. Um, the reason I like this is like for a specific instance, um, when you are AT and you shoot your shot, um, you need to go get more ammo. You might not have an ammo crate near you. Um, so what you can do is you can check your map instead of when this is off, instead of having to go over every single person, obviously there's not a lot of people on the map right now. Um, instead of having to go over people and hover and see who's the rifleman, Okay, having this on allows you to see, okay, this is my rifleman, that's who I need to make it to. Um, same thing as a squad leader. Uh, if you have an enemy BTR coming in and you're like, shit, I need to get some, some AT to engage this. Um, I can figure out who my AT is, maybe who the AT is in the other squads. And I can say, hey, squad two, can you send your AT east? We have a 30 mil inbound. Um, it just allows you to have a little bit more information um, in that regard. Um, so that's the two big things when it comes to your settings on here. There's there's some other th other things, grid line opacity, uh, objective line opacity, uh, map icon scaling. So if you want to make icons on the map look a little bit bigger, um, you can do that. Um, but that's, that's the biggest thing with that. So the next thing we have is judging distances. Um, so obviously a lot of the squads or a lot of the fights in squad um, are far greater distances than you guys are typically used to if you're or if you're new to the game uh if you're coming from call of duty if you're coming from battlefield if you've maybe not played a shooter in a long time uh you're not used to getting shot at from two three hundred meters um it's just not something that's usual in video games 
Um, if you're coming from something like Arma, then you understand it a little bit more. But for the most part, not really. Um, so what you can do uh, is a lot of the time, like you can have a fire team. Squad leaders can throw out marks um, that tells them the exact distance. So if I want to know the exact distance to this building over here, I can throw out my attack mark. Okay, it's 60 meters. Cool. Um, as a regular member of the squad, you cannot do that. You have fire team lead marks. So if someone chucks out a fire team lead mark, I don't think I can do it yet. No. So if someone chucks out a fire team mark and they say, hey, can I get the distance to this? You can give them the distance. Be like, okay, that's that's whatever the distance is. That's 120 meters. Um, typically, as a, as a new player, you won't have that option. Um, so if you're getting engaged from somewhere and you can kind of tell where they are, this is a bad example. This is a lot of buildings. I guess the mosque is a good example. Um, what you can do is you can count these grid squares. So you got your big, big grid squares when you're all the way zoomed out. These are your thickest black lines. Um, these are 300 meters each. Okay. 300 meters. Come on guys. <laughs> uh, these are 300 meters side to side, top to bottom, corner to corner, whatever it may be. Um, thank you for the gifted sub, by the way, I appreciate that. Um, when you zoom in a little bit further, okay, it breaks down. Uh, each of these squares uh, into three or into three by threes. And each of these are hundred meters wide. Uh, you zoom in even further and it breaks it down into another three by three. And these are 33 meters wide. Um, another thing that people may call out, um, it's not as common anymore is, is doing grid call outs. Um, so something you'll hear is if a squad leader ever says, hey, there's enemies in, uh, in C388. Um, basically what they're doing is they're coming over here. They're going to C, they're going to three, you're going across. And then basically you can zoom in and go C three. Okay. And then three, you don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't like these personally. Um, it was a huge thing in the passive squad nowadays with the, with the prevalence of fire team leads, um, and the availability of people in the squad to mark things. It's, it's far easier to just say fire team lead. There's a mark. There's helmet marks here. There's a tank mark here, whatever it may be. It's a lot easier to pass on the information that way. Um, it also really helps if you guys are new, um, if you're trying to judge AT shots, whatever it may be. Um, if you look at where you are in a grid square and the enemy 30 mil is directly to your east and he's, you know, maybe halfway through, you can kind of count it like that for almost done and then we'll bring it on back. Um, so that's your grid squares. All right. So again, all the way zoomed out 300 big squares, 300. You zoom in a little further. They're going to break down into thinner lines. Each of these squares is hundred. Okay. You zoom in even further. You got these white lines. These are each 33, uh, to just help you when you're starting out to, to judge distance. Um, because that's a big thing. Like you don't want to be missing some of your first shots because you don't understand the distance. You don't be shooting short. You know, you miss the first couple shots and the person's able to take cover. They're able to relay your position, whatever it may be. Um, it's just better if you're hitting the target the first time. Um, moving on to some of the marks on the map. Uh, there's a shit ton of them. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, there are, we're just going to go over some of the basic ones. So you guys can understand some of the things that you'll see on the map. Um, so the most basic one is a helmet mark. Okay. Helmet mark equals infantry. Okay. When you see a bunch of them, more helmet marks probably equals more infantry, uh, is the safest way to think about that. Um, fire team leaders can place up to three marks. Um, so if you are a fire team leader, you can place those marks down to kind of help out your squad leader, identify things. Um, but when you place your fourth mark, your first mark disappears. So just a heads up for that. Um, other things that you'll see on the map very often, uh, is this castle mark. This castle is the fob radio. Um, so if we look here, this is our fob radio right here. Um, this is your, your heart of your fob. This goes down. Everything else goes down. Um, you have a trapezoid. Okay. Right here. This is your hab. That's a spawn point. If that's marked on the map, it's the enemy spawn point. Um, the, the flag is enemy rally point. That's not marked super often. We can kind of just go through and you can look at different things. Uh, a big thing is identifying, um, different types of vehicles. Um, so a lot of times people come in and they, they kind of identify everything as a tank or everything as a BTR, whatever it may be. Um, but there's very different identifiers, uh, for the different vehicles. So when you see tank, this is main battle tank. Okay. Think, think M1A2 Abrams, think T72, think, think challenger, think that along those lines, big boy tanks with big boy guns. Okay. Your next step down is, is your tracked and wheeled IFVs. Okay. These are your. Um, these are your Bradleys. These are your BMP ones, your BMP twos. Um, 
and then for the most part you can you can lump all the wheeled vehicles in together somewhat um these are your strikers your btr 30s uh your labs i know labs are more of an ifv um classification um or more of a ifv but sometimes you can you can lump the apcs in there as well um so those are i mean that's what you're looking at for those you can also uh you can come up here you can look at what people get also so if you're looking at the map and you see someone marked a tank so you see a tank mark up here you come up here obviously we're not on a big map right now uh you see that the enemy only has the high the biggest vic they have is a bmp2 so if someone marked a tank you can safely assume that it's probably just a bmp2 um it's probably not an actual tank because they don't get a tank um so that's just simple things that you can look at uh this is a great tool um Oh, things th these things along the top also if you're ever wondering exactly what these marks are uh, you can click these so that you can actually pin it there and look around um so if you find a mark on the map that you don't understand what it is um say someone throws down uh this in placed hmg mark right here you're like okay i see that i don't really understand what people mean by that you can come in here uh okay in placed heavy machine gunner okay got it so it's just a good way for you to to look at things cross-reference them and just slowly kind of understand more and more what people are marking on the map and then you'll eventually just gain an overall knowledge uh, of what you're looking at um and it'll just become second nature um so there's not a whole lot else we're going to talk about um i wish we had more people on our on our seating layer by the way oh we got one right here okay when someone turns transparent in color they are incapacitated i feel like this is something a lot of people maybe understand but don't look at that much when i see people are incapacitated i know enemies are pretty close by um so if i see a lot of people getting incapacitated at the same time i can assume hey maybe a full squad maybe a vehicle i can assume if more of my guys are going down the bigger the threat um so that's a huge thing to pay attention to also if you you know if you see a bunch of people all turning transparent because they're moving along a straight line to get to the next objective maybe you take a different path. Maybe you say, hey, SL, uh, everyone's dying right there. Um, what do you think about us diverting south and then pushing east? And he might say, hey, that's a great idea. Um, because what you'd never wanna do is do the same thing everyone else is doing if they're finding no success. Um, that doesn't really make any sense, so don't do it. Um, but that is for the most part, really all I've got for you. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed kind of just a, a live look at going over some stuff if you do enjoy this uh drop by the live stream sometime again i stream monday through friday uh 8 a.m to 2 p.m est um we'd love to have you in here we got some awesome people in chat um if you guys are not subscribed in chat head on over to the youtube channel you'll see this one live here soon um right. but yeah that's really all i've got for you uh we'll keep looking at uh at some smaller topics uh to do live here on stream and then the bigger guides the bigger scripted guides will, will keep coming along as well. Um, that's really all I've got for you. Uh, till next time, I'm out. Thanks for watching.